we've got an awesome presentation coming up with Kate and Joel Temple. They're going to take us through how they brought two characters who despise each other together. Um, they're from the Captain Jimmy Cook books into a completely new book. Yours truly, Alice Ruley. Their session is called Pen Pals or Penemies. Um, I'm sure you can have a few questions. And Kate and Joel are really into questions. So they've actually left 15 minutes at the end of their sort of more formal speaking stuff for you guys to ask questions. So I can absolutely 100% promise you guys there'll be 15 minutes of questions at the end for you guys. And I'll be running the mic. So keep me fit, okay? That's your job. Uh, I also want to let you know that Kate and Joel will be signing books in the book signing tent on the senior school oval at lunchtime. Lunch will happen after this session, so you get to go out, get some fresh air, some sunshine, have some lunch, maybe get a, an autograph, grab a book, get them to sign a book. But don't be, like I said before, don't fret if you don't get all the signatures you want. Um, there are a lot of you and there are a lot of other kids in other sessions at Scribblers this morning. So if you don't get all the signatures you want, please do come back on the weekend. Scribblers will be happening all weekend um, in Claremont, so at the Good Shed and other places. So come and visit us then. So let me introduce Kate and Joel. You might well have already met this very talented duo through the award-winning series Captain Jimmy Cook or through one of their many picture books, such as Mike I Don't Like, Room on, on, on Our Rock, and the one with my favourite title, Are You My Bottom? Hopefully, hopefully no one here is still reading that one any longer. But you might not yet have come across their new book, Yours Truly, Alice Tooley. If you have ever had to do those pen pal letter writing exercises in class and have found them a little bit tedious, you'll really feel for the two main characters of this book. They are made by their teacher to write to each other for the whole term. Letters to each other for the whole term and they loathe each other. It's funny, it's sweet and here to tell us a lot more about it are uh, Kate and Joel Temple. Will you please welcome them? Hello. Thank you, Deb. Hello. Thanks, Deb. Hello, Perth. So first of all, I'm just wondering, there's a lot of people here. A lot is of people. It, is everybody here? Can you put your hand up if you're here? Okay, most people. And I just want to check, um, put your hand up if you're not here. Okay, quite okay. a few. We're missing a few, Joel. Okay, if you come in later, just come in quietly, sit down. That's a good idea. Yeah, you'll, you'll catch up quickly. Okay, so we want to introduce ourselves. Uh, we're going to start with this guy. Does anyone know who that is? What do you think? Who is it? Tintin. It is Tintin. <laughs> that's Tintin. That's right. This guy over here who looks a bit like Tintin, that's me. That's me when I was a kid. So before we were authors, we were kids sitting in the audience just like you guys reading books. And the books that I used to love reading when I was in primary school were these ones. Tintin. Who's read those? Yeah. Good books. Any favorites? What's your favorite Tintin? Destination yep, that's Moon, not bad. what a that's winner. That's not bad, I like that. Explorers on the Moon, the follow-up is quite good as well. So you'll know that these books are full of action, adventure, really great artwork, and they're really good books in between other books. So if you're reading a chapter book and you want to have a bit of a break from a chapter book, go to your school library, pick up a Tintin, you won't be upset. You'll be pretty happy that you did. Okay, who's this? It's not Tintin. Tintin. <laughs> Who do you think it is? It's me. That's me. That's not the twits. Oh, yeah, that's the twits. <laughs> that's right. That's me when I was in grade four. And my favourite author when I was a kid, and actually still today, is Roald Dahl. Who likes Roald Dahl? Me. How good is it? And that was right. The twits. Anyone else tell me who the other one is? What do you think? The witches. And what I love about Roald Dahl is that Roald Dahl writes the most stinking, horrible, mean-spirited, creative, which is a very bad thing to be if you're a baddie, right? Really horrible baddies. But he writes fantastic children that are bright and intelligent and resilient and creative and brave. And I love how he puts those two things together in the same book. And when I was a kid, I really wanted to be a writer. I always wanted to be a writer. Actually, I half wanted to be a writer and I half wanted to be an ice cream inventor. I still have really good ideas for ice cream. 
It's a good um, job if you can get it. Mint mm. and ham. Do you think that would be a good ice cream? Yeah. Uh, I think I have a talent for it. It's untapped. So what happened was I was in grade five and I had an author come to my school. His name was John Marsden. Has anyone heard of John Marsden? Hand up if you have. All the teachers, of course. Yeah. John Marsden is a fantastic Australian writer. And you might know him from the movie Tomorrow When the War Began. He's very famous for writing that, but he's written so much great stuff. And he came to my school and he did a workshop. And he said, we're going to write a haunted house story. And I thought, fantastic. I love writing and I love haunted houses. So he said, just give me all the words we're going to need for our haunted house story. So I said, um, haunted? And he put that up on the wall, um, up on the board. Can anyone else tell me a word you'd need in a haunted house story? What do you think you'd need? Blood curdling? Good. What do you think? House. House, haunted house, yes. Yep. Spooky? What did you have? <laughs> what was yours? Ghostly? Good. Up here? Big voice? Yep. Boo! Like a ghost, yes. Creaky like over here? Let's get a couple from here. Yes, you look like you know how to write a haunted house story. Frightening? Terrifying? Scary. So he put all those words up on the board and I thought, fantastic. I love writing. I love writing haunted house stories. We've got all our words. I am ready to go. And then he said, we're going to write our haunted house stories now and you can't use any of those words. <sighs> yeah. I thought, how can we write a haunted house story without those words? But you know what happened? People wrote the most unexpected, most fantastic haunted house stories because they couldn't use any of those words. And that made me think, that's a pretty good job. I think I'd like to do that. And today, that's what Joel and I do. We write children's books. We write two kinds of, picture, uh, two kinds of books. We write picture books, some of these ones here. And we also write junior fiction, so fiction books with pictures in them, because we love pictures. And I think what we'd like to do is introduce you to our main character of our Captain Jimmy Cook series. Has anyone come across Captain Jimmy Cook discovers third grade? So there's plenty of you who don't know Jimmy. Now, for those of you who don't know Jimmy, he's going to introduce himself. He's a kid who thinks he is a world-famous explorer. Let's meet him, Joel. Here he is. Meet Captain Cook. Uh. Wait, not that Captain Cook. Uh. Captain Jimmy Cook, world famous explorer. Well, almost. He's got his sights set on Hawaii. Hello, but first, huh? he's going to have to get a crew. Jelly wrestle a TV star. Save an axolotl. Fight a ball pit of mean kids with a fake arm. Avoid kale. And take on the biggest, baddest uh, monster of them all. Not him. Her! Hi. Life's quite an adventure when you're in third grade. Captain Jimmy Cook discovers third grade. Okay, so you know a little bit about who he is. Now I'm going to do some show Meet oh, Cap some showing off, but I have to get Me past that one. There we go. Showing off wasn't going off. Now, okay, so the thing is, this book's got two in the series, and we won this really big award for this book. We had to go down to Tasmania and meet the governor who lives in a castle. Joel, I put on a tie... We're feeling really pleased with ourselves. Mm. You know, you've got to get a photo for your mum when you win an award. That's what we did. But can anyone tell me what is wrong with this picture? <laughs> Who is that? Who is that? Photo bomb. Yeah, photo bomb. So, as I say, you know what it's like when you, you get an award at school. You've got to get a picture for your grandma. So it's no different for us. So we went back again, get a nice picture. Look how pleased we look with ourselves. So proud of ourselves. <laughs> Who's that? I don't even know that guy. I don't Double know who that is. Double photo bomb. That's terrible. Anyway, what I want to tell you about is how we came to up with this idea of Jimmy Cook. So when you're a writer, you've got to do a bit of research. And one of the things we started researching was kids who've actually made great discoveries to inspire our character, Captain Jimmy Cook. Now, these are real-life stories that are actually true. And this is my favourite one. This boy here. He's in grade six, he lives in Denmark, and he got a metal detector for his birthday. And he went out in a nearby field with his metal detector, and he started looking for something. And because he's from Denmark, he was probably looking for maybe a, a Viking coin or something like that, and he had a good metal detector, not one of those rubbishy plastic ones, one of those really good ones. Beep, beep, 
beep, beep, beep, beep, beep, beep, beep, beep, beep. What's that? So he starts digging it up. And whatever it was, it was big. So he digs and he digs. And he pulls out this big chunk of metal you can see him holding there. And he doesn't really know what it is, but the metal detector won't stop beeping. It's beeping here, it's beeping there, it's beeping everywhere. So he gets his mum and he says, Mum, there's something out there and it's big, I'm going to need your help. So she comes out and they just start digging it up. And what they dug up, and this is true, was a World War II German aircraft. The entire thing was intact and buried in the ground. And the worst bit is the pilot was still in it. Mm. No, no, relax, it's okay. It's okay. He was a very old man because the war had been over about 70 years. He had a bit of a leg cramp because he hadn't moved his muscles, but he was extremely grateful for being dug up. The first thing he said was, oh, thank you. Thank you very much for digging me up. And then, he, then he wanted to know, hey, can you tell me, is World War II still going? Can I go home now? True story. This, this young girl, Saga, she was in Sweden. She was having a swim on a nice uh, sunny day. Not, not that day. That, I would not go in the water on a day like that. But she's having a swim, 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 swim. And her foot touches something. She thinks, oh, that's a stick. I'd better pick that up and throw it away. Pick up a stick. Whoa. She's holding up a Viking sword. Pretty cool. Kids find some amazing stuff. This guy I like too, young, young William Gaduri, this guy. So he did something pretty amazing. He did something that no explorer had been able to do for 500 years. You see, there was this legend of a lost city deep in the jungles of Central America. And explorers had set out expedition after expedition. None of them came back. And I'll tell you why, because the jungle is a dangerous, dangerous place for a start. You've got jaguars, you've got anacondas, you've got llamas, you've got <laughs> venomous guinea pigs. You know, if you can avoid going to the jungle, please avoid going to the jungle. This kid was too smart. He didn't want to go in the jungle with the dangerous alpacas and so forth. He went on something called Google Earth. And you guys would have seen your house or your school using Google Earth. So he did that, but on the jungle. And he looked and he looked, bit by bit, throughout all the trees, until he came across these two straight lines. And in the jungle, there's no such thing as straight lines. So he got very curious. And he zoomed in, zoomed in. And he sent the pictures off to a university. And the university have now sent expeditions to that part of the jungle. And they're starting to dig up these things from a lost city. So pretty amazing. Great discovery from a kid your own age. So they've made some great discoveries. But what we would like to discover as writers when we write is our voice. And that is what we're really thinking about when we write Captain Jimmy Cook and our Alice Tooley books. We're thinking, how do we bring Jimmy's voice to life? And the way we did it was we thought, he's an explorer, so he needs a logbook. And that means, like a logbook, this is Jimmy, this is one of the internal pages from Jimmy's logbook. It starts day eight, weather, low-flying birds, and then it's got something called an inventory. So the inventory is anything that Jimmy has in his pocket that day. Are there any kids here who are good at collecting random things in their pocket? Yeah, there's a lot of Jimmy Cooks here. So Jimmy Cook is exactly like that. He's always got like a Lego man without an arm, half-eaten jelly snake. Um, this time he's got one speckly feather and a coin, possibly Mongolian. So he always finds really cool things. They're in his pocket and that's part of how each day starts. And then he tells us what is going on in his world. And because we've written it in a logbook, we get to hear the way Jimmy thinks and the way he talks. And as a writer, if you've got a really strong tone of voice, things are really interesting to read. Now, these characters up here also have very strong tone of voice. Now, I'm going to need someone, have a look at them, have a good look at them. I wonder if there's anyone here who thinks that these, they could name Every single character. Have a look at them. Every single character. There's a prize Ooh. involved. It's tough. 
Okay. It's tough. There's a lot. We've All got right. a few. This guy, I think this boy here. Yes. Yes, I think you. Would you like to come up? Okay, okay. come up. Come up on stage. It's tough. There's a few there. What's your name? Alex. This is Alex, everyone. Say hi, Alex. Hi, hi Alex. Alex. So, Alex, who have we got here? Come a little closer. See if you All right. Know. Tell me who you think we've got. A dog man. Yes. Yes, correct. we have dog man. A weirdo. Yes. Correct. A uh, Captain Underpants. Correct. <laughs> uh, Greg. Greg Heffley, yep. correct. Uh, Tom Gates or something. Tom Gates, correct. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, can anyone it's, help it's, him it's, out with this one at the top? Who's that one? Funny kid. Funny is it funny kid? kid? Yeah. Okay. AKA and, Max. Oh, and you know this one, of course, right? Captain Jimmy Cook. Good work. Are we okay, missing any? Else? Else? One Who's more. It? Anyone for this guy? Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. Well Fale, done, Alex. Nice work. And I think, I think Tom. Someone weekly. Tom. Tom weekly. Right. Well done, Let's Alex. Well give done. Give Alex a round of applause. Alex, you get a book. Nice work. Take a seat. Okay, that's true. And all of these characters have got really strong tones of voices. They also have something else in common. Does anyone know? Just looking at them. What else do they all have in common? What do you think? They're animated, yes? They're all cartoon characters. Cartoon characters? They're, They're all, all boys. boys. Correct. What's with that? <laughs> Where are all the funny girls? Because I know for a fact girls are hilarious. So what's going on <laughs> with the girl factor? So. Joel and I started thinking, since girls are so funny, and we'd written one of these characters too, Captain Jimmy Cook, and he's hilarious, why don't we do something different with our next book? Instead of just writing another Jimmy Cook book, why don't we write a different kind of book where his class enemy, Alice Tooley, who is hilarious, writes the book with him and we get to see her tone of voice as well. And so that created a bit of a challenge because we thought, just a second, a diary, a logbook, these are great ways to show a character's tone of voice. But how do you show two characters' tones of voice in the same book? Okay, we came up with this idea. We got them to write letters to each other. So Captain Jimmy Cook and Alice Tooley, his class enemy, write letters to each other. And this is how they look. Now, I think we're actually going to get... Alice is a new book, so many of you won't know it. We're going to introduce Alice to you, and then we're going to read a little bit of it. Okay, here she is. Meet Alice. Amazing news! There's a brand new book by me, Alice Tooley, about me, Alice Tooley. Yay! Yours truly, Alice Tooley. Letters from my enemy. Okay, it's not all written by me, just the amazing bits. The other blah blah bits are written by that <laughs> not good boy, Jimmy Cook, who stole my diary. So if you love unicorn slime, mystery jars, bathroom mm. ghosts, and not him, you'll love my book. Yours truly, Alice Tooley. Time to shine. And it is time to shine, isn't Amazing. it? Amazing. Thanks, Alice. Quiet, Alice. So this is how it looks. Now, we've got two choices here we're going to give you. We've written... There is one Alice book that is a book, but we have just f finished writing the second one and no one has ever heard it. Would you like to hear a brand new book that is not out yet? Yes. Okay. Right. Excellent. Okay. That's why it's in paper form. The way we're going to do this, because we have two tones of voices, is I'm going to be Alice with my lovely plastic tiara, and this will be Jimmy Cook. Now... This book, this second book of Alice's, starts with a birthday invitation <coughs> from Alice. It says, Dear Jimmy Cook, you are invited to a Woodland Princess tea party to celebrate the enchanted birthday of Her Magical Highness, Miss Alice Tooley, 1pm Saturday, September the 19th. We will dance around Rainbow Maypole and dine on edible glitter cakes. Come dressed as your favourite magical forest sprite, RSVP, Alice Tooley. 
Okay, so Jimmy writes an RSVP to Alice, and it goes like this. He says, Dear Alice, this is my RSVP. Thank you for the invitation to your Woodland Princess birthday party. As you know, I am an expert on forests and wilderness survival. I even once saved my whole family from a vampire bear attack on a camping trip. At least I think that's what it was. But it might have just been my dad tripping over the tent ropes on his way to the toilet. I can tell you right now, whatever it was, it was pretty scary. Anyway, I would love to come to your forest party dressed as a giant ground sloth. But I have something else on that day, and so do you. Yours marvelously, Captain Jimmy Cook. And Jimmy attaches his invitation up here, and it says, Dear Alice, the temperature has dropped to minus 62 degrees. Your fingers have turned to ice. The walls are rattling from a wild snow blizzard. You feel sick from eating real penguins. You're trapped in Antarctica. There's only one thing to do. Party! You are invited to Captain Jimmy Cook's Antarctic Explorer birthday party, 1 p.m., Saturday, 19th September. Feast on frozen treats like ice cream shaped like icebergs and cupcake husky dogs. RSVP, Captain Jimmy Cook. Whew, what a problem. Alice writes back, Dear Jimmy, your birthday is on the same day at the same time as my birthday party. You'll need to move it. I've been planning my party for ages. And I've even booked an amazing entertainer who's going to teach us how to make crowns out of dried food. Um, like flowers and berries. It's going to be amazing, and I'm sorry to say, much better than yours. Yours truly, Alice Tooley. Dear Alice, I have to admit your party does sound 50% sort of good and 50% sort of not. I'm particularly interested in making a crown out of dried food. I would probably make mine out of dried meat, because that would really come in handy for an Antarctic explorer. They were all starving. They were just eating any random thing they could get their hands on. So a meat hat would be totally useful. I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm really into everything to do with Antarctic and Arctic explorers at the moment. Yours frozenly, Captain Jimmy Cook. <sighs> Dear Jimmy, yes, of course I've noticed that you're obsessed with the South Pole. You've been wearing a giant fur coat to school for like a week. Aren't you hot? Your face is really red. Is it real fur? Because I'm pretty sure that's illegal. And by the way, can you please move your party? Because I sent out my invitations first. Yours truly, Alice Tooley. Dear Alice, I am pretty hot actually. I borrowed the coat from my gran and she said it was wool. And I think she's right because I do look like a woolly mammoth, which is pretty awesome. But back in the olden days, like before World War II, but after the dinosaurs, Antarctic explorers were totally wearing fur everything. Fur hats, fur socks, fur underpants. I'm not joking, fur undies. You can't find fur underpants anywhere these days, I should know. I think you can buy fur trousers, but they just make you look a bit like you have goat legs, which would also be amazing. Also, regarding your request to, to move my party, let me think. Um, no. I'm not just being mean, but I actually can't move it because that's the day I was born. And if I want to move it, I'll have to like 3D print a time machine and then travel back in time and stop my parents from even meeting, which will probably mean I won't even get born, which means I won't exist. So you are actually asking me to die. Yours crossly, Captain Jimmy Cook. That is totally ridiculous. I'm not even saying you should be born on a different day, although that would be Totally convenient. Uh, I just think you should move your birthday party. I really can't move mine because I've booked everything and plus that's the only Saturday I have available. I would have it on my actual birthday, which is two weeks after yours, but my schedule is totally crazy. Uh, every weekend I have ice skating, marching band, circus arts, beekeeping, archery, story club and science girls. So if I don't have the party on that date, I won't get to have a party at all this year. So please, can you move it? Yours truly, Alice Tooley. Dear Alice, you're not the only one with a busy schedule. I'll have you know that every weekend I'm flat out too. At the moment, I'm building an igloo for my party in my backyard. It's really, really hard, mostly because my mum is totally against it. I can't blame her though, because when I first started, I was using these ice bricks I found in the freezer, but they turned out to be some food my mum had frozen, like spaghetti sauce and curries, so she wasn't too happy when it all started melting. Anyway, now I have to make my own ice bricks and she only lets me do it one at a time, so it's really slow going. You know what? 
I've had an idea. Let's just invite different people to our parties. You invite some to yours and I'll invite uh, the others to mine. Problem solved. Yours cooperatively, Captain Jimmy Cook. No, no. Dear Jimmy, but I'm having a class party. I've already invited everyone and I mean everyone, even you. There's literally nothing that can be done about it. You have to move your party. Yours truly, Alice Tooley. Dear Alice, let me tell you a little story. Once there was an elephant called Plimmy. He was a pretty cool elephant who was 162 years old and had x-ray vision and wore a captain's hat like me. One day it was Plimmy's birthday. So he invited all his friends to his party and made this awesome ice cream cake with ham and lavender, which sounds kind of gross, but it is really appealing to elephants. Anyway, he invited all his friends, including this sometimes mean howler monkey mermaid called Ballas Pooley. But Ballas Pooley didn't want everyone to go to Plimmy's awesome party even though everyone was super excited because Plimmy always has amazing parties. So Ballas organized her own party on the same day and invited everyone in the whole universe. But she forgot that included dangerous three-headed aliens with laser eyes that destroy everything they look at and turn everyone into fire zombies. They can't help it. They just look at something and zap. It's instantly a fire zombie. The only person who wasn't at Ballas's party was Plimmy because he was at his own party eating lavender ham cake. So everyone in the whole universe except Plimmy got turned into fire zombies and Ballas Pooley was totally to blame for destroying the entire universe. Yours authorly, Captain Jimmy Cook. So you can see they have a bit of a problem, Alice and Jimmy. So um, I think what we might do now uh, is get up and shake it off. Shake it you off. You guys sit down for a long time. So up you get. Have a Up wriggle. You get. Have a wriggle. Have a floss if you Have do that, floss. if you're into that. If anyone does these ones, do those ones. Oi. Uh, we'll like you. All right. Great work, Sit guys. Sit down. And take a seat. Good. Can I have the clip Good on? to get that out. Right. So, when you're finding your voice in your writing, you're going to want to look out in the world around you for nice things that inspire you. That's what we're always doing. Look around you for things written things that make you laugh. Joel and I collect them and we want to share some of our inspirations with you. We love signs. So here's a good one. If you hit this sign, you will hit that bridge. Okay, all right, interesting. We like that. I love this one. We collected this one. Now pet friendly. This is from Motel. Now pet friendly, except for bears. We're not making that mistake again. That's good. Good tone of voice. Ah. This one's good. Danger. Do not touch. Not only will this kill you, it will hurt the whole time you are dying. <laughs> so it's good sign. Not going to touch that thing, whatever it is. I love this one. This is a private sign. Please do not read. Ah. <laughs> uh, also, kids. Kids are writing some great signs. At the recent protest that you might have seen on TV, Kids wrote some great signs of a really good tone of voice going on. These girls here made this one at their protest. I've seen smarter cabinets at Ikea. Clever. And then, of course, there was this one. Keep the earth clean. It's not Uranus. <laughs> so true. So Very true. good tone of voice. So what Joel and I try and do, we collect up these little things and they inspire us in the way we write our characters' voices. What we also like to do in our books is put our own little spin on things, our tone of voice. And we have all these weird products in our books. This is something that appears in our books. It's a box, a cereal box called Wheat Blocks. Anyone tell me what it's inspired by? Yep. Wheat Bix, exactly. That's it. Kooky Cola. What do you think? Coca-Cola. Office Perks. Office Works. And this one, does anyone know that show where they do a cake off and they have to do a co cake competition? Yeah, well, in Alice and Jimmy, that's one of the ways they try and solve their birthday party problem. They have a cake competition. It's not called Nailed It in our book. It's called Cake Fail, but it's based on Nailed It. You know yeah, that one. Yeah, you know that one. Yeah. Meowie Chowie, what do you think that is? Yeah, cat food. Cat food, yeah. 
Apple fizzo dust. Any ideas in the red shirt there? Yell it out. Popping rocks. Exactly. Yeah. So now it is your turn. Joel and I encourage you to make some trouble with your writing. Use your own tone of voice to write letters to people, to write your own signs, to inspire, to disrupt. Writing is a really powerful thing that you can do. And when you find your own tone of voice, you can really make yourself laugh and other people laugh. I think, Joel, that we have time for some questions. Questions or tips? Tips? You guys don't want any of our top secret tips, do you? We could, let's run okay. through them quickly. All so right. it's not always easy to find your own tone of voice. It's not always easy to find your voice. So here's, and that's the feeling you get when you're stuck like this cat. So these are the tips that we'll leave you with. The first one, keep a notebook. Every writer and everyone here seems to have a notebook, which is wonderful. Tick, already doing so that. Hand write, put your notebooks up if you've got them. Yep, Excellent. good to see. Good to Brilliant. see. Brilliant. So these are really useful tools for recording all your thoughts. Now that might be a little idea that's popped in your, into your head. Maybe it's the name of a character you want to write a story about. Maybe it's an idea for a funny sign. It could be a funny sign you yeah. saw or a funny joke that a friend to told you. Yep. So just write it down in this book and that will become like a little toolkit for you when it's time to write your own stories. Okay, next one. And this is my favourite one. Any perfectionists in the room? I sometimes suffer from this. This is really important with creative writing. Perfect is the enemy of awesome. And what that means is when you're doing your creative writing, you've just got to get that stuff from your head onto the page without anything getting in the way. Don't worry about making mistakes. Don't worry if you didn't choose the right word or you forgot your capital letter. Don't worry about that stuff. Get the great stuff from your head straight onto the page as fast as you can. Get that flow happening. Don't let anything stop you. The time for perfect is in drafting. You can do perfect then. The time for awesome is when you're starting to write your creative story. Yep. So part of that is, watch out for this guy. The rubber has no place in a first draft. Just get it all down. The other thing is, just start. Don't just sit there. Oh, I don't know what to do. I've got too many ideas. Which one shall I choose? Choose one. Get going. Because what happens is once you start, they all start coming out. So just get going. And look, if none of this works... A Have sandwich. A sandwich. Yeah. A cheese, a cheese toasty works for me. So what this means is take a short break, go and have something to eat, and then come back to the project. That'll give you more energy to complete your project. We have time for a couple of questions, Joel. Does anyone have any questions about, am I still wearing a tiara? I'm still wearing a captain's hat. I don't know why I'm I think it's that. really unfair you've got that picture of that cheese toast. I know, there, guys. Right? We That's are true. starving <laughs> over here. Okay, I'm going to be, I want good questions, That's guys. That's true. We'll put that up instead. Hands up. Our question cat. <laughs> okay, just over to the side here. What's your favourite food? Favourite food, cheese toasty, definitely. Okay. Especially okay. this time of day. Next one. Why did you choose to write? Good question, Kate. Uh, we chose to write because we love to come up with characters and stories. We love making kids laugh. We've got a couple of kids ourselves and we like writing stories that are really funny and we like telling stories, so that's why we chose to write. Okay, we've just got one down here from Palmyra Primary School. Which one is your favourite sign? Oh, oh, probably the one about bears, I think. I think that's, that's, that tells a whole story just in, in one sentence. You I go, mean, what? You what could happened? Write, you could write a short story just based on that sign, couldn't you? What yeah. on earth happened for that sign to go up? I hate to think. I'm right in the back. What year did you start writing? Uh, How old were you, well, Joel? We... Both started writing our first stories, I think, when we were in year three. Yeah, great. So was that was a long four. time ago for us. But yeah. Yeah, we were, we were like the same age as yeah. you guys. Okay. What year did you write yours truly, Alice Tooley? So that came out in 2017. So last year, it came out at the... Um, Alice Tooley. 18. <laughs> 
Yeah, it just came out last year. Last year. Yeah, so it's new. It just came out at the end of last year, but we've just finished writing the second Alice Tooley, which is called Yours Truly, Alice Tooley Birthday Wars, and that will come out in this August. So we've done one every August. Kept kept very busy. Matten. Um, Are you going to make any more series of books? So. Sorry, could you repeat that one? Are there going to be any more series of books? Yes, so there's one more Alice Tooley coming out in a few months. A and new series? Uh, working on a new we series. We are working on new series, that's true. Okay, Tane. Um, when did you guys meet each other? Just uh, me- I just met Joel in the uh, car park before. I don't really know him. I, I don't really know who this guy is. <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you. A long you. time ago. Ten years ago. Okay. At the back. Um, why do you like ham and cheese toasties? Yeah. Own up, Joel. Why do you like ham and cheese toasties? Well, they're pretty good, you know. They're, they're warm. They're full of protein. They're, they're cheesy. I like the way they melt. And, okay. You know, they don't Sh- take long. Shush to now about your cheese toasties. I like cheddar. I like all Be kinds quiet. of... Bit of parmesan cheese sometimes. Tuna. Yeah. Sorry. Did you have anything, like... Did you have another job, like, did you have anything in mind except writing? Well, I did want to be an ice cream inventor, but uh, Joel and I both did another job, which was a writing job. So we went to university um, and both of us did similar things. We did, um, we did language, um, English at university, and then we both got jobs being writers uh, in advertising agencies. So I think that's part of why we also like signs. I'm a big fan of a good sign. Okay. Do you have an inspirational author? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Uh, look, there's, there's a lot of inspirational authors at Scribblers Fest, actually, and, and you'll see more of them as, as the festival goes on. Probably but, my, but my, my big inspiration, particularly for our picture books, if any of you have read them, would be Dr. Seuss and P.D. Eastman. Yeah. We really love Dr. Seuss. Yeah, Richard Scarry. Richard Scarry, well. I love that. But all those guys, the, the Roald Dahls, the, the Herges who did the Tintins, there's so many. I, when we go into a library or a bookshop, we're just surrounded by inspiration. And that's one of the great places to get inspiration from, from just reading. Other books. Yeah, that's not copying, books. by the way. That's inspiration. That's I'm right. so Did glad you guys said Richard Scarry. I thought oh, yeah. everyone had forgotten about him. I, loved him. I love him. Okay, here we go. What's your favourite... I mean, what's your first book? Uh, the first book that uh, we had published was a book called Parrot Carrot. And it was about... It was about combining animals that rhymed. So there was a parrot carrot, there was a gnu canoe, there was a snail whale, and so forth. So, yeah, that, that was a, our first picture book. What was your favourite book um, that you have written so far? Oh, that's a great question. Good question. Kate, Joel, you like the Alice Tooley book, don't my, you? Well, my favourite book that we've written is the Alice Tooley book because I really think that we need more funny girls in books and I love that Jimmy's hilarious and Alice is together and I really like how they don't like each other but then they have to solve problems together and I also like the illustrations in those ones so they're a lot of fun to write Joel and I laugh a lot when we write those books so they're my favorite but your favorite's a bit different Joel my favorite is one of our picture books and it's called room on our rock some of you might have seen this. It's got seals on the cover. It's about seals. But it's, uh, it's a book you can read front to back and then back to front. And it uses the same words and the same pictures, but it tells two completely opposite stories. So it's, uh, you might be able to find it in, in, in your, your school library. libraries or maybe in the festival bookshop. There could be a copy to have a look at. Um, check that one out. That's, that's kind of the one that I'm probably the proudest of. Both great books. Do you have any pets? Yes, we have a, uh, a black cavoodle called Wicket. And a venomous guinea pig. And a, <laughs> and a Siamese fighting fish. I, I hope fighting someone's feeding the Siamese fighting fish. Oh, God. <laughs> How many books have you written? So, we, so many. So many. Published books, I think we're up to about ten. But we've got so many books that we've written that haven't become books. And that's part of being an author. 
You, you don't always get published. Publishers won't take everything that you write. Sometimes they say, no, it's not quite what we're into. It doesn't mean it's not awesome, though, does it? doesn't mean it's not awesome. Mm -hmm. And that's part of being an author, that sort of occasionally getting knocked back, getting rejected. That's part of being an author. So that's yeah. You have to be very resilient if you're an author. You don't get too upset about those things. You go, I've got another great idea, and you keep going. That's, that's right. a very important thing to have if you're an author. Yeah. Yes. Okay, next question. Do you like nachos? Oh. I'm okay with nachos, yeah. 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 Do you like nachos? I hate nachos. Good. Can you do the floss? <sighs> yes, Joel, I've been meaning to ask. Can you do the floss? Don't think so. No, hang on. Oh, it's throwing my hip out. Okay. Okay. Is that it? it was that oh, okay. it? Right. Nah. Okay, so no, officially... As judged by the children of Perth, no. Joel Temple cannot floss. But good try, Joel. Thank, thank you, Deb. Did, did Katie want to have a go? I'm not even trying. <laughs> I'm just not trying. What's your favourite animal? Oh, favourite animal. Uh, I know mine is the baboon. I love a good baboon. You love a baboon, we've, uh, don't you? we've got a picture book with a baboon in it. Mm. That's called Are You My Bottom? It's about a panda bear who's lost his bottom. It's a very serious book, as yeah. you can imagine. That's right. I mean, the, the loss of a bottom is a big issue, and uh, it's very serious. So maybe you can help him find his bottom by having a look at that book in your library or the bookshop. Question? Would he start writing a book about a cheese toasty? Oh, maybe. Maybe. I think so. Maybe. maybe I think you a... might start writing one about That's cheese That's a good toasty. idea for a story. What is your favourite book? My favourite book in the whole entire world. I've got to go back to those Tintins for me. I think I, I love, loved reading those as a kid, still do. Yeah. yeah. I think, look, if we can say a favourite book is a book you could read a million times and never get bored, my favourite book is actually a book called Go Dog Go. Does anyone know that book? That PD it's pretty is good. A, yeah, I love that book. I, I just could read that book every day and I'd be happy. I love yeah. that book. What's your funniest story? Funniest story? Uh, it's probably about the time you got locked out of your house in Melbourne, taking out the recycling. I can't believe I you're that. telling me. No, this. no, I won't, I won't. Okay, it's true. The funniest story, and I won't go into details, but I, I may have got locked out of my house in my underpants once and I had to run around the block with the recycling. Okay, that did happen. It was very embarrassing, and I'm very cross at you for mentioning it. Oh, sorry, it. okay. Does your illustrator change every time you write a new oh, book? Fan I'm so glad you brought that up. We work with a, with a number of different illustrators. So for our Jimmy Cook books, we have a different illustrator to Alice Tooley, and that's because Alice writes some of the book and we wanted her tone of voice to also have a visual that was different because it wouldn't make sense if it was the same because the other one was Jimmy's. Um, but Jimmy has illustrations of his own in that. But in our picture books we do change illustrators and the reason we do that is just the same way we're talking about finding your voice as writers, illustrators also have a voice, a visual voice. So we have to get the right kind of illustrator for each book. So the room on our rock book, which goes back to front, um, is a very beautiful book and it needed an illustrator who was very beautiful. And so that's, that's why it's a different feel, but we always pick the right kind of illustrator for the right tone of voice. It's kind of like matching them up. What was your first Jimmy Cook book? So that's called uh, Captain Jimmy Cook Discovers Third Grade. It's the that's yellow the, one. That's the first one. Yeah. That's the one that we got photobombed. Yeah. yeah. It's unbelievable. Um, are you reading any of your books to your children? To yes. our children? We always yeah. read our books to our children first. They're a really good test of whether kids are going to like it. So, yes. Yeah, we always try them out on our own kids first. I think we've got time for two more questions. Two more questions, okay? and then Just we have a question for you. And I'm so sorry I can't get to everyone. Okay. You're, you're a brilliant audience. Um, how did you know you wanted to be an author? Uh, I think we were probably in a situation very similar to you, and I thought when I was listening to John Marsden do his talk at my school, I thought, you know what, that's a job I'd like to do. Shall I work as in, in an insurance agency, or shall I be a children's author? Children's author. Nah. Definitely. 
Last one. Have you ever thought about making flip books? Flip books, like the, like the right. flipperama. Yeah, oh, I love the dogman flipperama. That's a, that's a pretty good idea. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a very good now, idea. We before might before we go, that. I just have a question for you. I'm wondering, should we photobomb Joel before we go? Yeah. I think so too. What? We, we're going to photobomb you and then that can be our, our new photobomb picture. Okay, okay. all right. All right, well, everyone if, up. If, photobomb if Joel insist. time. Ready? You stand there. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay, can everybody please give Joel and Kate Temple a massive round of applause for such an interesting presentation. Thanks, Thank everyone. Guys.